Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here again, bringing another math video. Uh, it's been a long time since I made a video, and uh, a bunch of my students have been missing Mr. B. So uh, I thought I would make a little video that might help them. And right now we're doing uh, quadratic functions. So this is a video on graphing vertex form using a mapping or a mapping rule. So this is vertex form. You can see you got your A, you got your H, and you got your K. Now I'm using a microphone here today, so I don't know how this is going to work out uh, quality-wise, but we'll see. Um, so the biggest thing now when, when graphing vertex form using a mapping, of course, is to be able to pick out your H and your K, which is your vertex. So your vertex is HK. And then also being able to pick out your A value, which is right here. Pretty simple, right? And then, of course, remembering your... Um, your mapping rule itself, which is the point x, y goes to um, x plus h and then a, y plus k. Now, h and k may not be the letters that you use. You might use p and q. Um, some people might use h and v for a horizontal and vertical. But either way, it doesn't matter. If they're just placeholders. They just represent a number. A number will be filled in there. All right, so let's give this guy a shot. So we're going to graph this guy and um, see what it looks like. So the first thing we need to do is pick out our A, H, and K. So our A value is going to be right in front of the bracket, so you can see it right here. It's negative 2. Your H value is always inside the square, so inside the brackets. And we have to be very careful. I'm just going to flick back for one second. This sort of default mode of vertex form has the subtract there. So if the subtract is already in your equation that you're given, that means your H is positive. So a lot of my students just think, well, if there's a negative there, my H is positive. If there's a plus there, my H is negative. And then my K is hanging out at the end sometimes, and there it is. That's your A, H, and K, which allows us to write our mapping rule. So remember your mapping rule is x plus h, a y, sorry, a y plus k. Now we can fill that in in a second. So one more thing that we need is our base table. So this is, if you graph the, the simplest quadratic, the base table would be what it, uh, what would give us. So negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And then 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. So that is the simplest quadratic with no transformations applied to it. And we're going to transform that guy. And I usually write mapping right here. And we're going to use a mapping rule to create a new table. So this will be our new table. And generally what I put in my x and y spot is my mapping rule. So my x plus h is going to be x plus 1. And then my y spot is going to be negative 2y plus 3. So I put the, the a in for a and the k in for k. So just like, you know, really just plugging in the spots, that kind of stuff. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run each one of these things in my base table through my mapping rule. So for every x value, I add 1 to it. So negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. And then 1 two, three. So I add one to all these. Now the, the y usually is a little bit different because you got you got the a value, so uh, it makes it a little more complicated, so we got to think about it a little bit. So that four is going to come and go right there. So it's negative two times four is negative eight plus three is negative five. One times negative two, negative two plus three is one, and then zero Times, so I'm taking the y values, by the way, and plugging in here. Uh, 0 times negative 2, so that's going to be 3. And that makes sense. Yes, it does. And then um, we got, well, it repeats after a while, but I'm just going to double. I like to do these points to make sure I did the first ones correct. So negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, so it's 1. And then 4 is negative 8. And then we got 3, so it's negative 5. So that's our new table that we're going to plot. So now it's just a matter of remembering that um, x goes first, y goes second. Always in your table when you do it this way, that's going to be your vertex. So a lot of people like to plot that first, 
So that gives them a good idea of what their graph is going to look like. So let's see if I can plot this guy. So 1, 3. So 1, 3. So it's going to go right here. And then I'm going to start my negative 1, negative 5 is all the way down here. And then 0, 1 right there. And then 2, and then 1. And then 3, negative 5. So you get you got to make sure that you got some symmetry. And remember that these make U's. So your graph should have a little bit of a curve to it, all this kind of skinny. And we put arrows on the end. So it ends up looking like that. And that's our, that's our transform function, y is equal to negative 2, x minus 1, squared, plus 3. There we go. So pretty much every question is exactly the same. i got another example for you just to throw you know, something a little bit different. So the next example, really the only difference is we still got to do our a, h, and k, but I got a plus here instead of a negative. So in order for that thing to change to a plus, remember in our regular uh, vertex form, it's x subtract h. Someone must have put a negative 2 in here. So that means my h is negative 2. So like my students, remember, if it's plus, then it's your h is negative. If it's negative, then your h is plus. It's always the opposite. Then your a is negative 1. So if there's just a negative floating out there, that means it's negative 1. And then my k is also negative 1 because it's subtracting 1. So I'll write my base table again. So the simplest quadratic with no transform, uh, transformations done to it. So uh, this is just something that you need to remember. And then it turns into this guy. So remember, it's x plus h, so x subtract 2. And then it's ay, so negative y, negative 1y. You can put the negative 1 there if you want. I just put negative. And then subtract 1. So with all the x's, I'm going to subtract 2 from them. So negative 2 subtract 2 is negative 4. And then they all just follow after that. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. So they always just go up by 1, basically. So this guy, I put it in here. So be careful. It's going to become negative 4, subtract 1. And that turns into negative 5. Negative 5, then it's negative 1, subtract 1, which is negative 2. And then 0, so negative 1. And then 1, subtract, it's negative 2. And then it repeats, of course, negative 5. All right, so now we are ready to plot. So go ahead and sub this guy. There's my vertex again, which is also my h and k value. So it's a good check. Negative 2, negative 1 is right there. And then I'll plot my other guy. So negative 4, negative 5. This guy's a little more condensed. Negative 3, negative 2. And then negative 1, negative 2, 0, 5. So there's my quadratic. We extend through the points a little bit. I always tell my students, extend through. And there it is. We put our arrows on the end. So guys, that's how you plot a uh, quadratic in vertex form using a mapping. Hopefully this video was helpful. Um, as always, like, subscribe, share, leave a comment. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in class.